brothers and sisters in Christ, a blessed sixth Sunday of Easter to you and to your family. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus was preparing for his imminent departure. He was about to go back to ascend to his Father. And like any ordinary human beings, his departure was a moment of sadness. But he gives them some kind of assurance in order for them, for the disciples, not to get worried. It was so life-giving to hear what he said, I will not leave you orphans. He assured them of his abiding presence by sending the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And just like the apostles and disciples of long ago, God the Father and the Son is ever present in our midst as the community of believers today by the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit being present, Jesus mentioned his role to us. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. I repeat, the Holy Spirit is our advocate. Perhaps in legal terms, he is our attorney defending us from unrighteous and unjust accusation. Or in sports, the advocate is our coach. For the same reason that athletes, no matter how excellent they are, they always need a coach. The Holy Spirit in, is our coach to instruct and correct us when we make mistakes, to encourage and motivate us when we feel down, to challenge and inspire us to be the best we could be. And now the question, how do we receive this important advocate? This statement is clear in our gospel today. It is by striving to live according to the law of Christ, which is love of God and love of neighbor. That is how we can receive the Holy Spirit through our love of God and neighbor. I would like to present to you three virtues of love in order to make the command of Jesus possible in our day-to-day -day living. First, love must have humility. Let us remember that humility is the foundation of our real love as the biggest obstacle to love is pride. Abraham Lincoln once got caught up in a situation where he wanted to please a fellow politician. So he issued an order to transfer certain regiments. When the Secretary of War, Edwin Stanton, received the order, he refused to carry it out. He said that the president was a fool. Lincoln was told what Stanton had commented, uh, and he replied, if Stanton said, I'm a fool, then I must be, for he's nearly always right. I see for myself. As the two men talked, the president quickly realized that his decision was a serious mistake, and without hesitation, he withdrew the decision and command. A president withdrawing his orders not only being wise, but humble for the love of the constituents' common good. Going back to the life of Jesus, he humbled himself to be humiliated and obediently accepting even death on the cross for the sake of mankind. He taught us how to forgive out of love and to forget out of humility. Today is soul searching for us. Let us re-examine our hearts if there are unforgiven hurt or unforgotten bitterness. You know what? I am convinced that it is easy to love from a distance and it is not always easy to love those who are next right to you, especially during this time where everyone is, is asked to stay at home. Perhaps you don't only take each other for granted now, but oftentimes hurt each other because of unkind words. 
This is then an invitation for us today to obey the commandments. How? By a love, having, and humility. The world today is upside down because there is so little love in the home, in the family life. Let us help the world turn normal again. Our family is the first school of love. Our church, our community is the second school of love. We must strengthen the bonds of our families and our communities. Start being charitable to the people closest to you to help the fallen world rise up. For charity always begins at home. Second, love must have patience. A person who has patience knows how to wait. Love is not something that comes abruptly or quickly. We have to work at it and let it grow so that we need to be patient with ourselves and with others. According to traditional Hebrew story, Abraham was sitting outside his tent one evening when he saw an old man who is weary from age and journey coming toward him. Abraham rushed out, greeted him, and then invited him into his tent. There he was the old man's feet and gave him food and drink. The old man immediately began eating without seeing any prayer or blessing. So Abraham, Abraham asked, Don't you worship God? The old traveler replied, I worship fire and reverence no other God. When Abraham heard this, he became uneasy, grabbed the old man by the shoulders and threw, threw him out from his tent. When the old man had departed, God called his friend Abraham and asked where the stranger was. Abraham replied, I forced him out because he did not worship you. Abraham was surprised to God's answer. I have suffered him these 80, 80 years, although he dishonors me. Could you not have endured him for one night? Patience. Philip, in our first reading, proclaimed the good news in Samaria. This was a place where Jesus was not accepted because he was a Jew. But Jesus was patient to them. Now, as an apostle of our Lord, Philip continued the good intention of Jesus to be welcoming to strangers for the kingdom of God is not exclusive. This is a reminder for us who minister for the church. When we do our mission, like teaching or catechizing, we must treat the beginners with patience and gentleness. We must treat those of different beliefs with respect. We must bear inconveniences and suffering as part of our mission. St. Peter, in our second reading, was so strong about patient suffering in order to sanctify Jesus and to give reverence to him in our lives. Third, love must have courage. How often do we not reach out because we are insecure? And because we are afraid of rejection, it takes a lot of courage to love. And let us learn from the first Christian community who were so devoted in reaching and touching the lives of peoples for the sake of the gospel. They dare to love because it is the right thing to do as followers of Jesus. I remember a brave mother whose son underwent a liver transplant because of congenital liver disease. The testimony of the mother was so touching and worthy of praise when she said, If God will allow, even if I will have more children, like my sick child, I will repeatedly donate any part of my body in order that my child will live. It takes courage to sacrifice and there can be no real love without sacrifice. As Christians, let us always choose 
the hard and difficult way because the easy way is not an option. The way of the cross gave birth to that resurrection. Dear friends, loving is what life all about. It takes these three virtues of love to make loving possible and concrete. Humility, patience, courage. Let us take note that we can only remain in love with God every day if we keep reminding ourselves that our most important appointment of the day is our appointment with God and others and the most important agenda is to love. Let us listen then to the whisper of the Holy Spirit. Stay safe. God bless you and your family.